Hello. In this video, we're going to work through this question right here. And the purpose of the video is using sine law to find an angle. So, first thing I'm going to do with this problem is I'm going to write out sine law. And that is A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. Now, one thing that's really useful to develop, or a technique that's useful to develop, is being able to use some logic when setting up your formula. And that is, we always want what we're solving for in the numerator. So in this case, the length is in the numerator. But if I'm going to, and, and sorry, just to pause for a second, the length is in the numerator, how we've written it. And, you know, that wouldn't cause a problem if I was to solve for an angle. But these each of these are equal. So remember, if I do the same thing to each of them, it doesn't have an effect on the, the actual value of them. So if I take the reciprocal of each of these, I can rewrite this as sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. And in this case, where I'm actually trying to solve for an angle as opposed to a length, this second form is going to make the algebra a little bit more straightforward. So if we take a look at this problem, we're going to go through kind of a little step of seeing what matches up. <clears throat> so I know I want to solve for this, this question mark, which would be the angle y. So I, I have to go across and ensure that I have the matching length. I do. So now in order to use the sine law, I have to be sure I have one pair that is an angle with its matching length. So I look here and I know x is 65 degrees and I see that I have the matching length there. So if I'm trying to solve for y, I can then say sine of y over 13 is equal to the sine of 65 degrees over 17. And now I've set up that ratio. So once I have the ratio, I can then say sine of y is equal to the sine of 65 degrees all over 17 times 13. And now I take the sine inverse of both sides, so therefore y is equal to the sine inverse of sine of 65 degrees all over 17 times 13. Now a little point I want to make here is you might have been confused going from this step to this step. All I've done is take the sine inverse of both sides in its totality. So what some students might do here is a little sidebar. We'll just put a little star here and then I'll, I'll work it out over here. Some students might have done this. Sine of y is equal to and then they might have evaluated the right hand side. So if I take a second now and evaluate this, I'm going to say sine of 65 divided by 17 times 13, and I'm going to get 0 0.69306. And this is an approximate value now. So we have to be, be, be sure we understand that if I was to take the sine inverse of si this side, Though my answer is probably going to be pretty close, it still is an approximation. And it always is an approximation, but this is, if I, if I use this form here and type this directly into my calculator and take the sine inverse, I get a better approximation. However, this step is very useful because it actually acts as a check in my work. We know that the sine, the sine of an angle has to be less than 1. So at this point, by doing this step here, I'm ensuring that the math makes sense so far. It doesn't mean that it's right, but I can be pretty sure that I haven't made a mistake at this point because I've gotten a value less than 1. So now the last step in this problem, and we can go back to here, is to type it in. And if I evaluate this side, what I get is y is approximately equal to 43.9 degrees. And again, I can look at this and I can see that if I have 65 degrees, it's across from 17 millimeters. And since 13 millimeters is less 
than, six, than 17 millimeters, this angle Y should be less than 65 degrees. So on this quick little check, this does at this point make sense. I hope that helped.